So there's always a dilemma on what to choose, a gaming laptop or a gaming desktop. And if you are on a very tight budget, this can be a bit tricky because of the ongoing GPU shortage. So today in this video, I will be comparing a budget gaming laptop to a similarly specced budget desktop PC. Uh, here, my budget for the build is around 1,20,000 rupees here in Nepal or some 75,000 rupees in India. And uh, for the laptop, I got the Acer Nitro 5, which is the highest selling budget gaming laptop of 2021. It retails for around 1,20,000 rupees here in Nepal and some 70,000 in India. Anyway, let me start by building the desktop itself. First of all, of course, we have the casing. Here we've used this super affordable Zillion casing, which I think is an insane value as it comes with four fans in total, as well as a tempered glass. And it does not look that bad too. Similarly, I got this 650 watt 80 plus bronze PSU from Goldkist. Um, I know it is not from a popular brand, but trust me, it works really well. And I used this same power supply like three years ago and it still works like a champ. For motherboard, we got ourselves the MSI B450 Tomahawk, which is a decent motherboard for the price. Likewise, you'll find an AM4 socket on the center of the board. And for our testing, we're using the Ryzen 5 3600 XT CPU with the stock cooler. I got the 3600 XT over the 3600 because the price difference was just about 1000 rupees in my area. But if the price difference is over 3000 or 4000 in your area, I suggest you get the 3600 instead. And as I mentioned earlier, it's hard to get your hands on a new graphics card at the moment. Whether you're looking for a next gen card or an older one, they're all expensive right now and in short supply. In normal times, we would easily slot in the GTX 1660 Ti or RTX 3060 for the price we're paying for this setup, but uh, they are not that cheap now. As a result, I went with this uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 graphics from MSI instead. As for the memory, I've installed an AGB 3200 MHz DDR4 RAM from AITC in single channel. However, I recommend you get another AGB module sometime in the future for better gaming FPS. But since our budget is really tight, I went for a single channel instead. Likewise, I am also settling for a SATA SSD instead of NVMe as it's less expensive and sufficient for most jobs, especially gaming. Okay, so as you can see, our PC is ready and I have been playing some games and running some benchmarks. But before that, let me get you through a few basic details. When we think of gaming computers, the first thing that strikes our mind is graphics power. But it is more tricky when it comes to laptop graphics card. For instance, the GTX 1650 for laptops has a TGP ranging from 35 to 50 watt. Uh, it means that while many laptops ship with the GTX 1650, they all will not achieve the same level of performance. However, desktop GPUs are configured differently and they have a fixed TGP value that is typically greater than laptop GPUs. In our case, the Nitro 5 has been coupled with a 50 watt GTX 1650, whereas the desktop 1650 can reach up to 75 watt. For comparison, these are the differences in the specs between the GTX 1650 mobile and desktop GPUs. Interestingly, the 1650 for laptops has 12% more CUDA cores than the desktop version, but the desktop has a higher base clock speed and, as aforementioned, a higher TGP. Moreover, like the GPU, the CPU also makes a big difference in the performance. Here, we've used the Ryzen 5 3600 XT on the desktop and the laptop comes with Intel Core i5 11300H mobile processor. Here, the Ryzen 3600 XT packs 6 cores and the Intel i5 only has 4 cores. Plus, the 3600 XT also has the advantage of higher power draw, more cache memory and a higher clock speed. 
and thanks to the bigger area inside, desktops run much cooler and generally they offer better performance over time. Now, because of these, as you can see, the desktop performs better than the laptop in synthetic benchmarks such as Cinebench R23 and Blender. The laptop achieves neck-to-neck -neck single core score as the desktop on Geekbench 5 though. However, there is a variation between them in terms of multi-core and open CL points. The Unigine Heaven Test, which pushes graphics cards to their maximum average 89 frames per second on the desktop compared to the 60 FPS on laptop. Okay, now let's talk about the gaming side of things and in this aspect, I was pretty surprised with how well the desktop performs. First off, Counter-Strike, which is a CPU intensive game, yielded far better results on the desktop with an average of 294 FPS at the medium settings. The Nitro 5 here only manages to achieve 135 FPS on average. But I must admit that while the laptop scored less FPS, the gameplay was still enjoyable and the difference between their 1% flows is quite nominal. The next game that largely relies on CPU is Valorant, and the narrative is kind of the same here. As you can see, the desktop outperforms the laptop by a wide margin as it reaches a frame rate of 160 to 170 FPS on the medium settings, compared to the 80 to 85 FPS on the laptop. The winning margin of this gaming rig holds even if we're looking at the 1% lows, so yeah, better stability with the desktop. Moving on, we played Cyberpunk 2077, which you know is a highly GPU demanding game. Here with the settings set to medium, I got roughly 35 to 40 FPS on the desktop compared to the 30 to 35 FPS on the laptop. While the gameplay was not as fluid in the setting, lowering the graphics contributed for a slightly better result. Typically in such GPU heavy games, the desktop provides a much stable performance over time. After around 30 minutes of gaming, the laptop begins to get warm inside the chassis that results in further frame drip every now and then. Moving on, uh, Control is another graphics hungry game that I played on both these machines and uh, there isn't much of a difference in performance between the GTX 50 mobile and desktop cards. While the Nitro 5 averaged 35 to 40 FPS on medium, the desktop is slightly better at 45 to 50 FPS. By lowering the settings, the gaming experience on both the PCs became much more comparable. The margin is also narrow at 1% lows. Similarly, GTA 5 averages 120 to 130 FPS on desktop compared to 75 to 80 FPS on the Nitro 5 with normal graphic settings. However, the disparity between 1% lows is really notable here. The desktop averages at 78 FPS, whereas the laptop achieves 35 FPS at 1% lows. Furthermore, both give a 100 FPS plus experience in FIFA 22. However, the desktop ended with 45 to 50 FPS more than the laptop at medium settings. I dropped the graphics to low for further smooth gameplay and it's no surprise that the desktop wins by a large margin once again. Next, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at 1080 using low settings. There is a slight margin of difference between them. The Nitro 5 provides a frame rate experience of about 67 FPS, whilst the desktop scores an average of 79 FPS. Last but not the least, we played PUBG on both PCs and the laptop once again had lower scores. On low settings, the laptop can get 75 to 80 FPS, while the desktop can achieve 130 to 140 FPS. Likewise, the Nitro 5 achieves 55 to 60 FPS on medium graphics, while you can get a much smoother 110 to 120 FPS in the desktop. So putting it all together, it's no wonder that desktop computers give the best price to performance in every task you throw at them. However, we cannot deny the fact that even budget gaming laptops are now powerful enough for casual gaming. And with the new AMD 6000 and Intel 12th gen mobile CPUs expected to join the market this or next quarter, I am optimistic that the margins will become considerably narrower. Still, at the end of the day, it all comes down to the user's preferences. If you are someone who has to carry your machine to work or college, then you don't have any choice but to get a laptop. However, if you don't have to go mobile, then I recommend you get a budget PC that will definitely offer you a better gaming experience. So guys, that was all for this video. If you liked our content, do not forget to give it a thumbs up. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.